and welcome to Anatomy On Demand. This is the final lecture on the topic of the central nervous system and its related structures. And this one is about the coverings of the brain and the spaces and the fluid that's in this. And so we are talking about the meninges. So when we look at the surface, um, I want you to realize that these coverings are not only for the brain as shown in the upper level of pictures, but also surround the spinal cord. And there are some differences between them for two of the three layers, which I will point out as we go along. So the first thing has to do with, let's talk about in the skull. In the skull, um, or in the head, you, you've got skin, you've got scalp, then you have the skull. And remember the skull is covered by that dense connective tissue known as um, periosteum. Sorry, I was having a little brain fart there. Um, as the periosteum. And in the skull, the dura mater, which is the tough covering of the brain, has two layers and the outermost layer actually forms the periosteum of the skull. Right? And it goes completely around the cerebrum and cerebellum. Okay? If the dura mater is present, it is completely opaque. You cannot see through it. So you can't see the underlying brain. Now in the spinal cord, it's different. And the spinal cord, the dura mater, is not periosteum. It is not on the surface of the bone itself, but mater and the bone. Who knew we had fat in our vertebral columns? But we do. Okay. And so that's why it is this green line on the bottom left drawing. And on the right model, it's where the red star is. So that layer is the dura mater. If you go outside of it, you can see the adipose tissue, and then you can see the bone there. Now, the dura mater kind of holds the brain in the place. So not only does it surround the brain, but as you can see from the coronal section in the top right, you can see the blue line that goes down into that longitudinal fissures going all the way down to the corpus callosum right here. And you also can see that it's going up from the bottom. So it goes into our major fissures as well. So the part of the dura mater that goes into the longitudinal fissure, that is known as the Fox cerebri. And so the top right, that's the same picture that we saw before. But on the left where we have the skull ones, the brain has been taken out of the upper one. And so the green area, that is all dura mater that goes between the right and left hemisphere. And you can see the C shaped right there. That's where the corpus callosum would be, okay? And in the picture on the bottom, you can see that the left hemisphere of the brain has been there. So it has been left in place so that you can see how far down between the cerebral hemispheres this box cerebri goes. Now, in addition to going between the two hemispheres of the brain, the dura mater also goes between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And that part is called the tentorum cerebellum because it's kind of like having a tent over the cerebellum. You've got the cerebrum up here and then we have this little pup tent. And then my head would be the little cerebellum tucked underneath. So laterally, it looks like it's, it's mostly horizontal, but if we were to do a coronal section and look at it posteriorly, we have the fox cerebri coming down, and then you can see dura mater separating the cerebrum from the cerebellum, and that's the tentorium cerebellum. So go ahead and pause the video and look at this closer if you need to. Okay. So that's it for dura mater. If we take off dura mater, we can start seeing what's underneath. So in the top left picture, I think you can see the edges where they have cut the dura mater. So most of it has been removed. And what you're looking at is not a completely clean surface of the brain. You can see that there's this like filmy tissue surrounding the brain. And in the upper right picture, you clearly can see there are some dark blood vessels there. 
So this layer is known as the arachnoid mater, which translates into uh, the uh, spidery. Because between this layer and the brain underneath, it has like these spider legs or cobwebby things which attach to it. And it's in this layer where we are going to find the fluid or in between the cobwebs where we're going to find the fluid and the blood vessels. So outside was the dura mater, super tough, translates into tough mother. In the middle, we have the arachnoid mater, which is the spidery layer. Oh, and I forgot to talk about the arachnoid mater and the spinal cord in the bottom picture. So the arrows are pointing to the arachnoid mater, okay? Just outside of it, that white line that I'm pointing to now, that was the dura mater, and then superficial to that was the adipose tissue. So we have adipose tissue, then we have dura mater with practically no space, then we have the arachnoid mater, and then notice we have a big space, this big blue space there. That's where the fluid and the blood vessels are located. All right. Now, super glued onto the surface of the brain is the baby mother, known as the pia mater. And so when you are looking at the surface of the brain on the left side, it looks beautiful. There's no blood vessels, there's no filmy stuff there at all. That means the arachnoid mater is completely gone. But the pia mater is still present. If you try to peel the pia mater off the brain, you can't. It's like you have super glued your fingers together. When you actually pull the pia mater off, you're going to be pulling neurons and part of the, you know, like half of a millimeter nervous tissues off. And it's going to look like, you know, when you open a can of cat food and dog food and it's all kind of like ooh, across the top, it's not a smooth surface. That's what the brain would look like. And then on the cross section of the spinal cord where the arrows are, you can see the white outline, the outermost part of the spinal cord. That is pointing to the pia mater. So now that we know the three layers, let's talk about some spaces that we have there. The first one only exists in the spinal cord. Notice there's no brain picture here. And this is a space that is outside the dura mater. See the prefix epi, that means it's something on it. So this is between the spine and the dura mater where all that adipose tissue is. This is the epidural space that's highlighted in green on your left. This is where we send the injection for anesthesia for ladies in labor. Has nothing to do with doing a spinal tap on people. The epidural space so that the anesthetic can diffuse and hit those sensory roots coming into the brain. And the next space is known as the subdural space. So we're going from the epidural, go to the dura, and then between the dura and the arachnoid mater. In the spinal cord, it is a potential space, okay? Um, Ignore the picture on the left because that picture on the left is not pointing to the subdural space. Here is what that picture on the left is pointing to. Okay, you know what? Just cross subdural space off your list. Okay, let's talk about the subarachnoid space. The subarachnoid space is that large space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater, the one where I said all those little spider legs or cobwebs are located. So let's look at the picture on your left, which actually is a coronal cut going through the skull where we've got scalp up here and then we have bone. Here's the periosteum. Here's a space between the two layers of the dura mater. This light blue, that's the arachnoid mater. You can see all the little spider legs. The orange is the pia mater and the brown is the gray matter of the brain and the white is the white matter of the brain. So in this area where all the spider legs are, that is the sub arachnoid space. That's where the fluid surrounding the brain is and that's where the blood vessels are. And you can tell that because you can see a blue blood vessel in the picture on the left. Okay. So that's it on the brain. 
going to the right where there is the spinal cord section, what you can see is this big space right there. And that is also the subarachnoid space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater. Make sure on quizzes and tests, you write the word mater. Don't just write arachnoid or pia. It's got two words in it. And so in the subarachnoid space in both places, that's where the fluid is located. So in order to do a spinal tap to see if somebody has meningitis, the needle has to be put to where the tip of the yellow arrow is in that subarachnoid space. In other words, it has to go through the dura mater, that really tough mother, and into the subarachnoid space. And the name of this fluid is called cerebral spinal fluid. And these pictures are just showing you all the places where we find cerebral spinal fluid. So if you notice, it completely goes around the brain, goes around the entire spinal cord and also fills up the ventricles. There's a picture of it in the top right. It is perfectly clear. It looks like water. It is not water. There's lots of sugars and some other stuff in there, okay? And basically what it does is it, it helps lighten your brain so it doesn't feel like the three and a half pounds that normally feels like, like when you take it out and weigh it on a scale. And in fact, what it does, it's just like when you float in a swimming pool, you feel lighter. It makes your brain feel like it only weighs about a quarter of a pound. So that heaviness in your head, that's because your bones are heavy. And with that, we are completely done with the central nervous system. So kudos for all the hard work, and I will see you in class soon. Take care.